In the last video we added some validation and the validation handling. In this video we need to flash the errors that we get from the validation exception so that we can uh, display them during the next request. Now one way to persist the data from one request to another request is by using sessions. So if we go within our validation exception middleware, which handles our validation exception catching, we can do something like this. We can save our errors to the session this way. Now we know that of course this is not going to work because we have not started the sessions anywhere. Because as you might remember from our sessions uh, lesson which we covered in second section of this series, we need to start the sessions to be able to use the sessions super global. We can either start the sessions within our bootstrap process or we can have a middleware that does that. I like the middleware approach, so let's create a new middleware within our middleware directory called start sessions middleware. This will need to implement the middleware interface and we need to implement that process method. And here we can start the session. Now, while this looks good, we want to make sure that the sessions haven't been started before we start the session. And we also want to make sure that the headers were not sent. So we can do if session status equals to PHP session active, we can either throw the exception uh, notifying the developer that the session has already been started, or we can just use this to only start the sessions if the session status is not active. I want to throw the exception because this should technically never happen, and if it happens, we want to catch that during the development, or it's an exceptional behavior, so we want to log that and then look into it to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So we will throw a new runtime exception with message session has already been started. And actually, instead of the runtime exception, I kind of want to make a custom exception here. So we'll do session exception, and we'll create this class within the exception namespace. And this will extend the runtime exception. And let's get rid of the constructor since we don't need to do anything special here. And this should be good enough. Let's go back to the start sessions middleware and this is okay then we can check if the headers uh, have already been sent by using headers sent method and this header sent method has two required uh, arguments and they're passed by reference so we need to just kind of create these empty variables we don't really care and what happens is that these get set to the file name and the line where the headers were sent so if you wanted to log that you could do that so we can close that out and we'll just create this variable here, file name and line. And if the headers were sent, we'll throw new session exception with message headers already sent. All right. And then finally, we start the session and then we want to continue processing our request. So we can do something like response equals handler handle our request. And then we'll return this response. Now in between this, we need to save the sessions by calling the session write close function. The reason we are adding this is to sort of release the lock so that if there are any concurrent writes to the session, it is not holding up the script. Without it, the sessions are saved at the end of the script, but the way we're doing it here is that we start the sessions, we process the requests, and then on the way out, we save the sessions and then end it. Because as you might remember from the slim PHP middleware documentation, there is that nice diagram there that explains how the middlewares work. We're starting from the outer middleware, running through all the middlewares, all the way to the app. And then on the way out, we're starting from the inner middleware, all the way to the outer middleware. So in most cases, this is probably not needed. But it is a good idea to have it in certain cases where you want to make sure that it's not holding up the script by having locks on the session. All right, so we're done with this middleware. Now we need to register it within our middleware config. So let's open middleware.php and we're going to add that right here. And let's actually get rid of these comments so that it looks nice. So let's test this out now to make sure that it actually works. We can just simply dump the sessions for now within our auth controller where we are rendering the register view. So we can just simply do var dump session just to see if it's saved properly. So let's open the browser, 
visit localhost port 8000 slash register and sure enough we're getting an empty array initially because we haven't set any of the sessions yet let's hit the register on empty form and try to submit it and as you can see now the errors are set within the sessions all right so now how do we get this to the view we need to be able to access these errors within our twig template so that we can then uh, maybe display them under the individual fields one way we could do this is we could simply pass down the session errors as parameter right here so we could do something like errors session errors and then if nothing just pass down an empty array but the downside of this is that we'll have to do this for every single view that we're going to have so if we're going to have some validation errors for login view then we'll have to pass down this in here as well and so on another solution is that twig actually has a feature where we can pass down some uh, parameters globally so what we can do is that we can actually create another middleware that gets the errors from the session and then passes them down to all the twig views globally using that twig feature so let's add a new middleware here we'll call this validation errors middleware again this will implement the middleware interface let's add that method then within here we need to check if the errors is set within the session so we can do if not empty session errors then we need to pass down the errors globally to all the twig templates and we can do that by using add global method on the twig environment so we need access to the twig instance because we are binding the twig in our container we can actually inject that as a dependency in our constructor here so we can do private read only twig twig and then in here we can do this twig get environment add global and let's call this errors and we'll pass it down this way and then we just need to continue with the request so we need to process the request so we'll do return handler handle our request and this is good let's uh, now register this middleware in our middleware config we'll add it right here and now let's open the register twig template and try to dump their errors parameter within the template we can do that by simply accessing the errors parameter that gets passed and we can apply json and code function to it let's open the page let's refresh the page and as you can see this is from the controller and then we're getting the json encoded one from the twig template let's actually get rid of the one from the controller let's remove this let's also get rid of this let's refresh the page and as you can see we are able to access the errors within the twig templates without individually passing them down within our controllers now all is left is to simply access the appropriate error messages and then display them under each field so let's go back to the register let's get rid of this and i'm going to use a bootstrap class called is invalid to add some styling dynamically to each field so we can do something like if we have name within the errors then we'll add is invalid otherwise nothing and then we'll add a div right under here with the class invalid feedback and this will contain the error message so we can do the same thing here errors name and we'll apply the first filter which will basically only display the first error message in our array in case there were multiple error messages uh, associated with the name key so let's open the browser let's refresh the page and sure enough there is some styling applied to our name field now why don't you pause this video and try to add the same thing to the rest of the fields i've added this off the recording so as you can see i've added the one for the email for the password and for the confirm password so let's refresh the page now to confirm that that works and sure enough we're getting some nice ui on all of the fields now we probably want to make the errors go away on the next refresh because if i keep on refreshing these errors are not going away and i want to make these errors go away after i refresh the page we only want to display it one time so basically we want our errors to be flashed in the sessions one time only for the next request 
what we can do in this case is that we can unset the errors within the session after we retrieve it within our validation errors middleware. So in here we can simply create the errors variable and set it to the errors from the session and then we can pass that to our twig templates and we can simply then unset that session like this. Now if we go back to the page and refresh, we need to refresh one more time and as you can see the errors are now gone. Let's click on register. The errors are back, but if I refresh, they're gone. Now let's fill in some uh, parts here. I'll fill in this and maybe some password. Let's hit register. And as you can see, only email and confirm password are marked as invalid. As you might have noticed, after I submitted the form, it brought us back with the validation errors, which is good, but it also cleared up the form. It removed my name. So if I fill in name, email, and then I hit register and it redirects us back to register with the errors, it is removing those values from these fields. And that's kind of a bad user experience where you're forcing the users to fill out the form again from the beginning. Imagine you had 20 input fields here and then they would have to fill out 20 input fields every single time there would be an error in one of them. So what we want to do is that we want to keep the fields filled in whenever user is redirected back due to some validation errors. One thing we can do to solve this is that within our validation validation exception middleware, wherever we're adding the errors to the session, we can also add the post data to the session. That way the post data will be available within the next request after the user is redirected. So we can do basically something like session old equals to request get parsed body. And then we need to make this available within our twig template. So we kind of need to do the same thing that we did here using the add global method. So I don't want to put that within the validation errors middleware because it's kind of different. So instead, let's create a new middleware. So I'm going to duplicate the validation errors middleware and call this old form data middleware. Let's change the class name. And here we'll change the errors to old and this should be good enough. Now let's register this middleware within our middleware config file. And then within the register template, we can simply add the value attribute to the input fields with the old post data value. So for the name, we can do something like value equals old name. And we can do same thing for the email. So let's test this out. Let's open the browser. Let's fill in the name email and some password and I'll make the password not match. So let's click register. And as you can see, the name and email are filled in, but the password and confirm password are not filled in and we're getting the correct validation error. If we refresh the page, now the form has to be cleared out completely. So if I refresh, the form is cleared. Now it's generally a good practice to not flash sensitive data like passwords in the session. That is the reason why I did not fill in the password and confirm password using the old data. That being said though, right now the old array still contains the password and the confirm password within the session, even though I haven't filled it in here. And we don't want that. I don't want to store any sensitive data in the session like that. I can confirm that by simply dumping the old session data this way. So let's uh, fill this in. I'm just going to submit some password here and some name. Click register. And as you can see, the name is there. Email is blank. And the password and confirm password is within the session. And we don't want to do that. There are a couple of ways you can go about this. The way I'd like to fix this is that I want to exclude certain fields from being flashed to the session. So let's head over to the validation exception middleware. We want to remove some sensitive data from here. So what I'll do is that we'll take this and assign it to some temporary variable called old data. And then we can simply call the onset function to remove some of the sensitive data. Now, I don't want to call onset. Instead, I want to make use of the array functions. We can define some sensitive fields in an array, something like sensitive fields equals an array that contains password, confirm password, and maybe in future we'll have more sensitive fields. But for now, these are the two. And I want to remove these from the old data. And we can do that by using array diff key function. So let's do array diff 
key will pass the old data as the first argument and for the second argument we'll flip the sensitive fields array so we'll do array flip sensitive fields now what array flip does is that it flips the keys and values so in this case this is the value so when we call array flip the password becomes the key and confirm password becomes the key and then the array diff key computes the difference based on the key and since all data has the keys password and confirm it's going to remove password and confirm from there because it's contained in the second array now of course there are better places to store this data but right now our goal is to get things working we are going to make things prettier later on let's uh, open the browser and test this out so i'm going to submit the data again and as you can see, only name and email are contained in the session. All right, so I think we are looking good here. One thing that I want to add is some basic client side validation. And we can do that by using HTML required attributes. So let's add that to all the fields here. Now, if we go back to the browser and refresh the page and try to submit, we'll get this some basic browser client side validation. And let's get rid of this from here. Now I know that the code that we wrote so far is not that pretty and no, the code that you're going to write on the first try will most of the time not be pretty and that is okay. We want to make sure that the user registration is working, the validation is working, we want to make sure that the user is able to log in, log out and so on and then we are going to refactor to see where we can improve the code, maybe move things out and so on. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.